from uh, Ghent University. My presentation today is about uh, evaluating the uh, value of SHM with longitudinal uh, performance indicators and uh, hazard functions using uh, Bayesian dynamic predictions. Uh, there are mainly uh, four parts of this uh, presentation. The first is uh, about the objective uh, of, uh, of, the, of evaluating the value of SHM. And the second is about uh, uh, the joint model of longitudinal data and hazard function. And uh, Noise. Uh, yeah, it's working now. <laughs> so uh, the uh, the second is about joint model for the longitudinal data and the hazard function. Based on the hazard function, uh, we need to uh, we can determine the maintenance plan and the value of SHM. And uh, uh, the final is the conclusion. The first objectives uh, to uh, the first objective is to determine whether uh, monitoring or not, because uh, civil engineering structures are subjected to uh, time-dependent degradating uh, processes, which require considerations of uh, a wide range of uh, uncertainties. Uh, when it is required to make decisions under uh, uh, these uncertainties, uh, acquiring more information prior to uh, making the decision is uh, really crucial. Uh, and uh, SHM can provide information to uh, reduce the uncertainty, so it is widely used. But it comes at a cost that uh, is not uh, always justified by its uh, benefits. So we need to evaluate the value of SHM before its uh, implementation. And the second objective is to uh, determine uh, the difference of uh, implementing a SHM strategy uh, because the provided more information by SHM, uh, this uh, uh, decision maker will have a totally different uh, inspection uh, planning for this structure. Uh, this will lead to a change of this uh, expected total life cycle cost, and uh, the difference uh, can be calculated uh, can be calculated as the value of SHM. Uh, the calculation of the expected total life cycle cost is based on the inspection uh, or re uh, re repair plan. Uh, and here we use the hazard function or, uh, 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 or a failure rate uh, to de uh, as a basis to uh, determine this uh, uh, inspection plan. So uh, following, I will introduce the joint model of longitudinal data and hazard function. Uh, actually, this drum modeling is an uh, active topic in the uh, medical research uh, field. Uh, we, uh, where uh, two types of uh, uh, data are recorded for, the, uh, for a group of patients subjected to uh, uh, the same uh, disease. The first is uh, the longitudinal data, or in other words, the time series uh, response measurement for the, uh, uh, each patient uh, in this group. Uh, and the second is uh, their time to death data. And based on the joint model fitted to this uh, uh, recorded data, the objective is to, uh, de uh, to predict uh, the death of a patient with the same disease. It is uh, uh, quite clear that uh, uh, similarities uh, could be drawn from uh, the patients and the civil engineering. So it uh, might be interesting to apply this procedure in uh, uh, structural engineering. So here we also define two uh, uh, submodels. The first is a structural performance time series, where this YT is the observation outcome, consists of the underlying uh, structural states uh, with the random effect B characterized by the va uh, variance uh, parameter D. And uh, uh, this uh, epsilon T is the observation error, which is uh, time independent and uh, is normally distributed. And uh, for the uh, uh, second uh, submodel, it is the survival process defining the hazard function. Uh, this hazard function is defined as the limit of the uh, probability of failure uh, during the time interval as conditioned by the structure still surviving at time t. 
and averaged over the same time interval. And uh, actually, in uh, the civil engineering, uh, civil engineering uh, field, this uh, functional form of uh, the hazard function is uh, normally uh, 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 unavailable. So here we make some uh, assumptions of this uh, functional form. We assume that uh, it consists of two parts. The first is the general uh, baseline hazard, which is H zero T here, and uh, uh, the second term uh, is associated with uh, structural states uh, characterized by the random effects. To put it more uh, detail, uh, for the ba uh, baseline hazard, we assume a, ba uh, a Weibull baseline, uh, which uh, uh, in the uh, uh, red box of this uh, uh, equation, and uh, it is an accelerated failure time model. And for the association structure, we assume that the uh, failure rate of uh, 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 structure is related to the current value of its structural state and uh, its changing rate. Uh, normally, it's a, it's a, it is the case for degrading uh, structures uh, because, uh, 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 for example, in this uh, uh, figure, uh, if uh, the structure has a, a larger uh, uh, structural uh, state, MT, and a lower decreasing uh, rate, M, uh, lower decrease, uh, decreasing uh, rate, it will lead to a lower failure probability. So with this, uh, uh, functional form available, we can do some uh, parameter estimation. But here I will not go to uh, details about this. Uh, here, uh, MCMC methods can be used to do the parameter estimation. Uh, and there are also R packages available named uh, G, uh, GMBase to do the uh, parameter estimation. So to sum up this part, uh, for the joint modeling, uh, the uh, objective is to de uh, derive the hazard function, uh, which uh, is dependent on the uh, random effect. The different uh, uh, probabilistic model of the random effect will lead to a different hazard function. And as soon as this uh, uh, hazard function is available, uh, we can do the hazard-based maintenance planning and also calculate the value of SHM. So for uh, Calculating the value of SHM, uh, there are five notations. Uh, there are Z, uh, Z and X, there are inspection and monitoring outcomes variables, and the set is the structural state with uh, prior information uh, distribution at that, and uh, A is maintenance action, and E is the inspection uh, decision. And uh, uh, here, it, here it is the uh, decision tree uh, for uh, uh, for uh, planning these inspections and repairs. And uh, M0 is not implementing SHM, and M1 is uh, implementing a certain SHM strategy. So for M0, the expected uh, total life cycle cost uh, can be uh, calculated based on the prior information of the structural state, uh, which means uh, the inspection and the repair plan is based on the uh, uh, hazard function derived from the uh, prior uh, 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 random effect. While, for, uh, while if there is SHM uh, available, we can uh, update this random effect, uh, such as this right curve in this picture, and uh, we can see the uncertainty is less. So it will lead to a drop of this hazard function in return, the uh, inspection and repair plan are changed and leads to updated uh, update of this uh, uh, expected total life cycle cost. So this difference actually can be uh, uh, calculated as the value of SHM. In, uh, uh, it, is a, it is a kind of uh, expected value of sample information. And uh, this distribution of uh, uh, estimated uh, SHM cost uh, FX, uh, it is uh, uh, used to update the structural state. Uh, so, for calculating the expected total life cycle cost, uh, this part uh, I mainly uh, refer to the PhD thesis of uh, Professor's job and uh, Thorns, and uh, uh, it consists of the total uh, cost consists of the f uh, cost of failure. Uh, uh, inspection, repair, and monitoring, if there are any. And uh, for example, this is the 
uh, functional form for the uh, expected cost of the failure. And uh, we can see that there are several uh, probabilities required to calculate this. And uh, uh, these probabilities are related to the decision tree. Namely, there are four. The first is the hazard, uh, the first is the hazard function, uh, which we can derive from the drum model. And the second is a failure probability during time t, uh, conditioned that uh, there is no repair before t. And there are two, uh, this is calculated based on the hazard function. And there are uh, two methods to do that. Uh, one is by this, it is the uh, in integration, it's an uh, integration, and the other is by Weibull uh, distribution because the hazard function has a, a form of Weibull distribution. And uh, for the uh, probability of uh, damage detection and uh, probability of repair, I refer to the uh, uh, general paper here. And uh, this, uh, uh, for detail, we can refer to that paper. And for the risk acceptance criteria and decision rules, the maximum acceptable hazard is corresponding to the maximum allowable yearly failure rate, according to the GCSS model. And for the inspection planning, we use the threshold approach. That is, the inspection is planned in the year before the threshold value is crossed. So for different threshold value here, we will have a different uh, inspection plan. To uh, sum up this uh, in this flow chart, uh, with, uh, with the drawn modeling, there, uh, uh, there are, uh, the hazard function can be derived. Uh, but with the SHM outcome distribution modeled, the structural state can be updated. So this will lead to uh, uh, calculation of this uh, value of S HM in the function of this hazard function, like this. So the last is the conclusions. First, a joint model of the time-dependent structural performance and hazard function is first in, uh, introduced. And then based on the derived hazard function, uh, uh, is used as a tool for determining the inspection and repair plan. And then the uncertainty related to the SHM outcomes are considered and in incorporated in the drawn model, uh, uh, leading to uh, updates of the inspection and repair planning and uh, expected total life cycle cost. Uh, finally, the difference between the prior and posterior expected total life cycle cost is defined as the value of HM here. So thank you for your attention.